Greetings friends, it's Alexor again, and today with an actual Diablo video, sort of, kinda. It's Diablo vs. Last Ebook, because I've been playing Diablo a lot recently. It's funny, everyone is giving Diablo 4 a lot of shit, and has been for the last 10 months, right? And now with Season 4, finally it seems to be good, and I only started with Season 4, I have not played Diablo 4 before that, so maybe this is... Why my viewpoint is a little bit different than what most people say, because there are still people like Quinn, right? Quinn69, you know him, who says, uh, even with the new season, D4 bad, you know the meme, it's still the thing. Um, but, I mean, he's he's playing League of Legends now, I mean, come on, Quinn, come on, it's a fucking children's game, what are you doing? Anyway, <laughs> just pissing off everyone, easy. Um, I think, personally... That's going to trigger a lot of people. I think the end game is better in D4 than it is in Last Epoch. Again, I played 400 hours of Last Epoch so far in 1.0 since it launched. And we'll be playing a lot of Last Epoch coming and with the coming season that is actually coming pretty soon. But I still think playing through this, the end game feels better for a bunch of reasons. Now, I think the main reason why people think that Last Epoch's endgame is better is due to the skill system. And right? because if we're being honest, if you look at our Diablo skill system, the skill tree, um, this is it, right? This is your skills. Like the big ones right here, right? So you have Fireball and you can give it uh, damage over time or you can give it crit. That's it. In Last Epoch, you have an entire skill tree just for the Fireball. So I get it. In Last Epoch, you have way more options. And the end came to respec. This is what I've been doing, right? I just leveled one cat like one sorcerer, one uh, rune mass, and all this to, to level 80, 90, 100. And then you just keep respecking the builds and trying things and see what's cool, what's new, what else is going on, what else you can do. That's what you do with Last Epoch. Here you can't really do this, right? There's not much to respec here, right? You can of course use a different skill and then respec the build a little bit. Sure, but it doesn't seem like it's it doesn't give you that much in possibilities as it does in Last Epoch. However, that's of course the builds. However, the gameplay itself, I think, is much better in Diablo 4. Because let's be honest, in Last Epoch, what do you do in the endgame? You farm monoliths. The echoes, right? You do the same thing over and over and over again in Last Epoch. That's what you do. You go to the monoliths. And you keep farming the Echoes, which are the same maps consistently. You do the same thing, they are the same size. It's always the same, it's the same boss at the end of it. It's always the same, right? Then you just get higher corruption and you kill the Shade of Orbis. Cool, it's still the same thing, right? However, in Diablo, you have a lot of shit to do, right? You have the Helltide, you have the Whisper, the Tree of Whispers, you have the Nightmare Dungeons, you have the Pit, you have the Ladder, which you can also play alone, right? Um, you have the seasonal things with the wolves, for example, right now. You have the renown you have to max out to get even skill points. Um, you have the battle pass that gives you stuff, which we'll go into later as well. So there's just a lot you can do. You have also a lot of side quests, which is part of the renown, I guess, right? Or the renown. So um, you have world bosses, right? But there's just so much more gameplay-wise in Diablo 4 than there is in Last Epoch. Now again... We have to be honest with ourselves here, Diablo 4 is basically 10 months ahead of Last Epoch because, I said before, I think Last Epoch is going to be the full core game when 1.4 comes out, which is going to be in about a year, or 10 months maybe, I don't know. Because then they have all the, the end game, they have the campaign, they have the transmog system, then everything is in Last Epoch. Until then, it isn't really a finished game in my eyes. But still, if you compare it right now, I think Diablo is way, way ahead of this, personally. If we're being, except for some bugs, we're just stuck there. Um, that's just... The endgame feels better to play in here. Now, one thing is that I really like as well, also, I didn't even mention this, if you are running out of town, for example. Um, where is it? Let's go here, yeah. If you're going out of town... Which is, by the way, also way more lively than anything in Last Epoch. I think in Last Epoch, people just stand around. But here they're also walking around. There's dogs. They're actually moving. Right? There, there's things happening. But I guess this will also come to Last Epoch. If you actually go out into the wilderness and you are fighting enemies, for example. Oh, 
For example, you will come around to see it says event joint defined ground, and then you just stop here while you are doing your thing. I need time to prepare that. You should start attacking and having this in-between event. This is also an endgame activity, right? It starts really already very early, it's not really crazy the endgame. But I like these sort of random events that occur. Now, with the coming patch for um, last epoch, this is already also being worked on. Right? Especially uh, just today I posted the video about the newest trailer they launched. I need time to prepare. With the Nemesis system, this will be working on this to an extent. Right? Um, but it's not as big, of course, as this one, as you can tell. Let me kick this dude real fast over here. There we go. That was just a sort of three minute side event which just came came by randomly. And that just feels very good. You just go through the through the world and then just randomly this happens. Now Les Epoch can't really do this, obviously, because there isn't a huge map where everything is connected, right? Um you have zones in Last Epoch, whereas here everything is just one huge map, which is actually very well done by Diablo, I must say that. So yeah. These things are cool. Same with the events that pop up, with the world boss in 21 minutes, top left here, and the, um, the Legion events. That's just very cool. I think the only real problem Diablo 4 has when it comes to the endgame where people don't like it is if you go to the Hell Tide, we can actually do this for a second. Travel to the Hell Tide so you can see it. That is the color of things. Because if we're being honest, I know it's the Hell theme and all that, it's Diablo, I get it. But the Hell Tide is always red. Right? It's always fucking red. <laughs> Everything's always red. And that is a little bit annoying. After a while. Right now we're in town, it doesn't apply here, but if we actually get out of town, it starts to rain blood. As you can tell, see, it's all reddish now. And... So it just all looks the same. I'm not ready yet. And I can see how this could be annoying after a while. And people probably underestimate how powerful uh, colors actually are for our psyche. Like we really have, um, we really react to it. So if you think about Star Wars, right? Why do you think Darth Vader, or like the Sith in general, Darth Vader is completely black and he has a red lightsaber? Why do you think that is? Why are all the Sith having red lightsabers? Because that is associated... I'm gonna, actually going to get out of health at you. That is associated with passion and anger and like fiery stuff and all that. But that's the Sith. So color theory is a big thing. So if you constantly see the health head in red, everything is always just tainted in red. That gets boring. I can see that. That's probably a much bigger problem than people will give admission to. Um... But yeah, I think that's that's also an interesting part of it. Now, one thing if we compare skill trees is of course we also have the Paragon board, right? In Diablo over here. This looks overwhelming initially because there's so much shit to do and you have unlimited combinations to actually do these boards. But if we're being honest, most of them are the same because these really only just give you int and willpower. So you're always gonna go for the glyph spots, of course. The glyph sockets and maybe for the unique notes or these ones so it's not that big of a deal late game as people make it out to it to be there is however a lot you can get into you have all the glyphs you have all the cool things you can play around with it there is a lot of combinations you can make your own builds with and that's the same thing i think as last epoch just that they do it differently that you do it with skill trees for your skills here your skills pretty much always stay the same but the way you buff them is different but of course, in Last Epoch, gets a little bit more flashy because if you turn your fireball into a lightning ball, that also has different effects in game. That of course looks cool, and that feels better, right, from a late game end game perspective. Even though you can do much more here, technically, um, it's pretty much only just giving you more stats. So I see why that can be getting a bit boring over time. So that's it for the end game. I think they are similar, similarly strong. However, I do think that Diablo 4 has better gameplay mechanics in the endgame, whereas Last Epoch is pretty much always the same. But Last Epoch has pretty much a better way of 
being novel in the end game. Let's put it that way. It's more novel in the end game, but Diablo has a better gameplay. Now, another thing I think Last Epoch should absolutely have, and people are going to hate me for this. I think Last Epoch needs a battle pass. I know people hate me to say that, <laughs> but because it's extra money you have to spend. But there's two reasons for that. First, now you can, of course, completely monetize a game just with cosmetics. Absolutely. Totally possible. And they're doing fine. I mean, you have to buy the game, but still. Um, you don't have to buy the battle pass, right? You don't have to. But it sort of gives a nice progress throughout the season. And for some people, it's just very important to get to level, like, what's the highest level? Level 90, right? To just get to this. So they're going to just put in a ton of hours into the game just to get to this level of the battle pass. Right? So I think this is a, just a nice addition in progression, while also giving you more funds, which you can put into the game. Now, Diablo, of course, is riddled with microtransactions. Every menu you are, you can buy something with real money, <laughs> pretty much. So that's maybe a bit excessive. But the battle pass, just a regular battle pass, which every game has these days, I don't think this is a bad thing. You don't have to buy it, it's just cosmetics. Um, there is no need to get it, yeah, you get the season blessings, but you can, these are free, right? Yeah, you, you can just unlock them anyway. So um, that is just a nice additional progression towards the game, or towards playing the game. I think this is very cool. Now, as you can see in this clip in the background here from my stream, I like this a lot, that the, these enemies drop a shit ton of items in this in this manner. There's just a, a lot of, sort of, the items are exploding out of the caches. Like, you get a lot, a lot of items. Now, admittedly, the legendary items in this game are somewhat like exalted items in, in Last Epoch by the rarity they have, right? Um, but the benefit is you gain that extra bonus a unique item in Last Epoch would have, like changing your skill, for example, changing a fireball, um, or changing your Frost Nova, whatever, on these unique items, and you drop a lot of them. Admittedly, in the end game, 99% of these will be bad anyway, but I just like, this is important, this is a psychological thing, the feeling of killing the boss and it drops 15 unique items. It doesn't matter if you scrap 15 of those, or even 14. It doesn't matter. Just the fact that you kill the boss, you get that feedback. Damn, I did something great, I got so many good items. This is pretty much the same thing people were saying in the COF in Last Epoch, right? When you have these item explosions and there's 10 uniques lying around. It just feels good, even though you might not even use any of them. It doesn't fucking matter. It just feels good when you play the game like that. I think the big difference with uniques comparing them to exalts in Last Epoch is that if, if you look at your uni uniques and they have these aspects, right? I think this came with this season, right? With the aspects. This wasn't in the game before. Um, for example, yeah, this one. Yeah, you deal 23% increased burning damage to enemies below 50% life. It's just a nice bonus affix that the uniques can have, and you can also imprint them yourself on your items and all that. That is just very cool. And you drop these items. You see, I have a ton of these, right? A ton of these items. You drop them a lot, and it just feels good. Of course, the uniques in this game, which are sort of the legendaries, or like the uniques in Last Epoch, it's a little bit different. Um, they are rare, like these ones, right? Uh, unique items, sacred unique loves, or ancestrals. They are, of course, rare, because they actually change how the... how truly change how the... Um, Skill plays, for example, the fireball here. Now it bounces as it travels, exploding each time it hits the ground. And the build really came along with this item. It's the same thing like the unique items in Last Epoch or Legendary. These are, of course, still rare. And that's the idea, and that's fine. But having exalted items in Last Epoch that actually not only drop massively, much more from bosses or whatever, but they also actually give you some additional value other than just the tier 7 of the existing affix. You know, like the, these aspects are. This is actually a really cool idea. So Last Epoch could use this as well. I think that's a very great thing. And another key thing is what I really enjoy about Diablo 4, which is probably impossible to do in Last Epoch, if we're being honest. I think they can't do this unless they completely change the entire game. And that is... This is all a huge map, right? And if you are in the health head or whatever, for example, let's go to the Accursed Ritual, right? Because of the, at the Accursed Ritual, we pretty much always find other players. What well, was stuck. 
See, there's other players. They are already fighting this boss, right? But there's just other dudes randomly on the map. So the whole game has a much bigger social aspect. Also, key thing is if you are in a party, you gain more XP, right? By fighting here. So when I come here, usually people just randomly invite me to the party just to kill the boss. And then after this is done, everyone goes their own way again. Sorry, this is pretty loud. I probably have to leave this. So I just like the social aspect, because if you're being honest, if you play Last Epoch, since there's a group running around, that was so loud. If you play Last Epoch, you pretty much played alone all the time, right? It's pretty much always just you doing your thing. Of course you see people in town, and you can interact with them, and you can invite them to the party. And yes, there is party play, you can do that. But um, it's nowhere near like this. See, there she's gone. And we drop a bunch of cool items. Really crazy here, but good enough. And that's just, it just feels really cool. We just randomly join these people. It's just a cool social effect you have in the game there. That you don't have unless you poke. And it's probably impossible to do, if we're being honest. I don't think they can do this because otherwise they would need to make a huge, huge map like this that has no zones, that loads on demand and um, unless I add some like sort of world bosses you can actually do together on a certain echo or something maybe this will be coming I don't know but right now they can't really do it but this is really a big plus I think in this game where you just r see a random dude and it feels much dudes fighting with you and it feels much more alive the game feels much much more alive than last epoch not just right now because there's no players but you in last epoch you only see people in town right you don't actually see them in the zones. So that's a bit, a bit annoying. In this game, this is much better. So these were the points. I think Diablo 4 does way better than Last Epoch. And the Last Epoch can learn from Diablo 4. Because everyone's always saying like, yeah, Last Epoch is so much better. Some In some areas, yes. In some, it's not so good. In some things, it could learn from it. Of course, there's... I didn't even cover like a transmog system, right? Where you can change the look of your character completely. Or just the convenience with many things and how, how it operates, how it works. There's a lot of things that are very good in Diablo 4. But I think this really only came with Season 4. I think before that it kind of sucked from what I was told. But right now, as it stands right now, even with 1.1 coming for Last Epoch, I still think that Diablo 4 is the stronger game. I'm still gonna play a shit ton of Last Epoch because I'm just addicted to it. But objectively, I feel like... The, especially the end game and many convenience things as like the casual player are better in Diablo 4. So let me know what you think of what I just said. Do you completely disagree? Maybe <laughs> you are exactly on my page or you think I'm just talking shit. What am I smoking? So let me know in the comments what you think of that. And I will see you in the next video.